All right, so we have a new definition here, and it's the definition of a critical number. And this shouldn't confuse you, hopefully, if the last two videos made sense, because we're just talking about the same thing. All we're doing is we're, we're naming it so that we can refer to it easily. It's like when you get a new dog, you know what a dog is, you know how to feed it and take care of it. Well, uh, hopefully you do. But you have to name it so that you can refer to it. You don't want to just call it the dog every time. You, you, want to, you want to give it a name. So that's all we're doing is we're giving these critical numbers the name critical number. That's all. Okay, so it, when the derivative at a certain x value is equal to 0 or when the derivative at a certain x value does not exist, then that x value is a critical number. So in, in the very last video, we found a derivative. We said the derivative of a function was x squared minus 1. And then we said that this is equal to 0, so x squared minus 1 equals 0 when x is equal to negative 1 or 1. You can watch the last video for all of that. And so that means 1 and negative 1 are something called critical numbers. Now, why? Because if you take the derivative and you plug in negative 1, that will equal 0. Or if you take the derivative and you plug in positive 1, that will also equal 0. So negative 1 and 1 are critical numbers. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Now, let's look at some examples of, of just finding critical numbers. In fact, that's what the next few videos are going to be devoted to. But let's just do a couple quick ones right now. So find, maybe that should be a little bit bigger, find the critical num numbers, and let me just put it like this, of, and then let me think here, let's do, um, let's do x squared minus 4 all squared. So let me just kind of block this off. So to find these critical numbers, what are we going to do? Well, first things first, we need to we need to take the derivative, right? We can't find a critical number without the derivative. So the derivative of this function is going to be equal to 2. This is just a chain rule. Do the outside, repeat the inside times by the derivative of the inside, which is just 2x. Easy enough. Now, we have to set that whole thing equal to 0. So 2, let me use a different color. For some reason, that's kind of bothering me. 2 times x squared minus 4 times 2x equals 0. And now there's there's one, we can, we can solve these separately. First, this constant will never make the derivative equal to 0, so we can just kind of ignore that. And then we, if this is 0, it's multiplying, so everything will be 0. And of course, if this is 0, then everything will be 0. Well, 2x equals 0, that means x is going to be equal to 0. So our, our answers, we got one of them, so x equals 0 is one answer. And then when x squared minus 4 equals 0, well, this is when x is equal to negative 2 or 2, right? Hopefully you can see that answer pretty quickly. If not, you can use the difference of squares to solve that, or you can just take the square root of 4 plus or minus 2. Okay. So, so we, we, got our, oh, we got our critical numbers. 0, negative 2, and 2. That's it. That's all we had to do. We took the derivative, set it equal to 0, and, and we, we got our critical numbers. Okay. And we're going to do, like I said, the next three or four or five videos maybe even are going to be devoted to, to finding critical numbers, but also evaluating them, looking at a graph and, and seeing what's going on with the critical numbers. Okay, let's do another example here. So let's do x to the two-thirds. This is one we're going to look at in a future video, but let's just find the critical numbers right now. So the derivative of this is equal to two-thirds x to the negative one-third, which rewritten is 2 over 3 times the cubed root 
of x. So when is this equal to zero? Never, right? We have a constant in the numerator. That means this function will never be equal to zero, but, but we can uh, find when this function does, or when this derivative does not exist, right? It doesn't exist if we plug x equals zero in. If x is equal to zero, then we're gonna get two divided by zero, which of course is undefined. So x equals zero means that this, this derivative doesn't exist, so x equals zero is our only critical number. Okay, so, so let me, uh, whoop. what did I do here? So let me just show you that in one other simple way. So this would be, if you took f prime of zero, you would get two divided by zero, which of course does not exist. So f prime of zero does not exist, just like up here. This is part of the definition. So that means that zero is a critical number. Okay, so finding critical numbers is not too hard. You just take the derivative and either set it equal to zero or find out where the derivative does not exist.